your thoughts on Josh Heupel's contract extension. I'll share mine as well. And as Caleb wrote on offthehooksports.com, which you can check that column out, Caleb, this puts him in pretty elite territory. And I thought just an incredibly aggressive but apt move by Tennessee Athletic Director Danny White. Your thoughts? Yeah, my one of my mm-hmm. favorite songs mm-hmm. out right now was a Taylor Swift song called Bejeweled. And I feel like Josh Heupel is bejeweled right now. <laughs> He's a little older. He's got diamonds on the soles of his shoes, a Paul Simon reference. He's not going to be hurting for cash anytime soon. Yeah, maybe he can bring back the orange pants for some traumatic moments for everybody. Okay, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding. Um, (laughs) This was a move. Guys, Josh Heupel is the fifth highest paid coach in the SEC right now. Let me just name the other four real quick. Nick Saban, Jimbo Fisher, Kirby Smart, Brian Kelly. What do they all have in common? They've all played for a national championship. Three of them, Nick Saban, Kirby Smart, and Jimbo Fisher, have won a national championship. Now, you can think what you want about Jimbo Fisher at Texas A&M right now, but that contract was based on what he did when he was hired at Texas A&M because he's won a, at the time, he was a national championship winning coach. It made sense on paper, just hasn't worked out to this point. Josh Heibel's in that company now, and this is what I believe, and I've we've talked about this off off camera, Dave, we've talked about it over the phone. Josh Heupel has an offense that tons of coaches are trying to figure out now. I talked about Fordham just a couple of years ago. Fordham at the FCS level during the pandemic sent coaches to UCF to study the offense because they want to install it. I think it's pretty clear at some point an NFL team is going to come calling to see if this offense will work in the pros. We know the NFL recently there's been all hiring cutting edge offensive minds has been all the rage Everybody's looking for the next Sean McVay with the Rams. That's why Urban Meyer, Cliff Kingsbury, and Matt Rule all got jobs in the NFL. None of whom, outside of Urban Meyer, none of Matt Rule and Kingsbury were not didn't have the track record or the resume of success in college to warrant NFL jobs. But they got hired because people wanted to see if their offenses would work at that level. Josh Heupel could end up being the next one of those. Josh Heupel or Lincoln Riley, you pick because they both kind of run a similar offense. And this move, more than anything, was to keep NFL teams from calling because I don't think they're worried about losing him to Oklahoma. I think you and I know that he's not going back as long as Bob Stoops is there. And Josh Heupel wouldn't leave Tennessee for any other job other than Oklahoma. And Oklahoma, again, is not calling if Bob – Oklahoma is not a spot for him if Bob Stoops is still there. So this is all about the NFL. The NFL is going to want to try Josh Heupel's offense. At some point, one team is going to want to do it. And Josh Heupel, with this new contract, would be tied for the fifth highest paid coach in the NFL. Well, you saw Cliff Kingsbury um, get the job with the Cardinals, and that hasn't exactly worked out. I think he's got quarterback issues when you have to ride into a contract that a guy has to practice so much a week. I don't think that's a great sign. But his star was not rising at the really in the college level. And then an NFL team jumps on board because of the offense he runs. And uh, they're both innovative offenses, not exactly the same if you want to compare what Clean, uh, Kingsbury does and what uh, Heupel does. I thought you brought up a really good point in, in the NFL in that column because I think it is the NFL that Tennessee fans should fear the most. And in addition to what you said, yes, it's the creative offense. It's it's all of that. But it's also a mind that was able to adapt from what he ran at Oklahoma to what he's running now, which is significantly different from an offensive standpoint. So it's the adaptability. Throw in what you said about the offense, just if they packaged it up and sent it straight to Tampa Bay or wherever in the NFL, you got to think it's going to work for the short term. But if it does, and if there are rule changes and the fact that there's different rules as far as offensive linemen release and being able to go downfield, he's going to adapt and make it work. I think he's shown that much. The other thing that maybe gets a little bit lost is he is running the Tennessee program a lot like a GM. Now I think the days are gone where a a guy can demand to be the coach and the GM Bill Parcells style. I don't think that's going to happen anymore. And I don't think he would necessarily want to do that, but if it came down to, uh, Hey, Josh, the GM says, we've got to figure out, do we want this guy or this guy? I think, 
based off salary and productivity, he could give you a, a good answer there. And yeah, I think that's one of the things <clears throat> that Nick Saban struggled with in particular. Uh, you know, I think if they get Drew Brees, they were unsure about the elbow, if you remember back then, but he didn't have complete confidence in the direction of the Dolphins. So I look at this and it, it really drives home to me a question that was asked about, I would say roughly about six or seven years ago. And I'm sure you heard this again, please hit the like button. And if you haven't subscribed already, we greatly appreciate it. like button brings us more people in for the discussion. The, the, the thing about Josh Heupel and potentially going to the NFL is I, he's young. I think he would be a perfect fit there, but, Tennessee and the elite jobs in college, which I think there are about 15, 15 to 20. I think Tennessee's in the top 15 range. Those are destination jobs. So the question was five, six, seven years ago, Caleb, is Tennessee a destination job or is one coach like Lane Kiffin just going to continue to bounce? If Butch Jones had had success, would he have bounced elsewhere? And that was that was the concern. And part of that is because Coach mm -hmm. would have their name floated out there in coaching searches at other schools. I'm going to tell you the exact same thing I told you six or seven years ago, and that is Tennessee is a destination job. It's not just because Johnny Majors played at Tennessee. It's not just because Philip Fulmer played at Tennessee. It's the type of school that a coach could set roots in and as long as he has success and everybody's happy be the coach for the next 15 or 20 years as long as he's having success that's the big caveat so i think that answers that question because i did a little bit of digging into J josh heupel's contract so my question was what would he have to pay the university back if he decided to leave before december the 15th which is technically when the contract is set and the extension is based off that date. So you know, he has to spend uh, a significant amount of money. We're talking about $6 million if he were to get out of that contract, $6 million. Now, could the Dallas Cowboys see Josh Heupel as the next great head coach and pony up $6 million? Certainly. It wouldn't even be a bump in the road. But a lot of NFL teams couldn't or wouldn't want to, Caleb. A lot of programs that are in that top 15, top 20 range wouldn't want to do that in college football. So my, the biggest number I take away, even more than a $4 million raise, is $6 million that he would have to pay the university if he took another job tomorrow. It drops to $4 million after December the 15th. So if he had a great season and another school came calling Oklahoma or anybody, they have to pay $6 million then 4 million. That's a significant amount of money. It doesn't stop a deal from getting done, but to give a little bit of perspective, you had Lane Kiffin who had zero leverage said he had the Washington job. I, I'm not sure about that. Kind of played Mike Hamilton, got Philip Wilmer fired in the middle of the year. His buyout was 800,000. Well, Southern California didn't even blink at 800000 That's like, Caleb, me telling you that, hey, I'm going to give you this great job, but I've got to pay $20 to get Caleb. I mean, that is that 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 is not even a, an amount of money that's at all registers. So they paid that. But six or four million is a different world, Caleb. And I think it sends a very clear statement that Josh Heupel realizes what he has. He's happy. He wants to stay and he wants to enjoy the fruits of his labor. That was actually a bigger number to me than the five to nine million dollars, which is a very significant number as well. Yeah, so six million to me would have not been a big deal four years ago. And the reason I or even two years ago. And actually, the reason I say that at a school like Tennessee, I've said for years, and you know this, Dave, after Mike Hamilton and the Lane Kiffin fiasco, where you're right, Mike Hamilton got played. He opened up the checkbook for a coach that his whole I, whatever you guys think of Lane Kiffin, he didn't have the resume to have the checkbook opened up for him and his staff that he got by Mike Hamilton at the time. Um, I yeah. still the Raiders thing ended horribly, horribly, yeah, horribly. I, I still said it. I said at that time they should have hired Brian Kelly, and 
man, I mean, I did not know how right I was. I was wrong about my, I was wrong about my rightness. <laughs> and so, um, um, cause I didn't think Brian, I, I think Brian Kelly's a great coach, but, um, as far as the 6 million goes four years ago, I think a school like Tennessee with the boosters they have could open up that checkbook. You know, we've seen with Alabama and Texas a and you open up the checkbook to get the coach you want. What I would say though, is nowadays with NIL, and this is going to be a real story, Dave, in the future, I think you know this a lot of times when buyouts are paid and salaries are paid, that's boosters opening up checkbooks to pay sure. to help corral. They're going to spend a lot more of that money now on trying to buy players than they will buying coaches. That's a good point. So are you willing to open up the checkbook of $6 million to get, to pay a coach's buyout when that money could be spent? If you're USC friends and Typo's not going to leave Tennessee for USC. I'm just saying, if you are USC, wouldn't you rather spend that money buying all the top athletes in California to keep them at USC? Yeah. And, and no, I, 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 I completely, yeah, I, I, I see that angle now. I didn't at the time. The money's gotten so sidetracked and it's going to get even more warped with the money that uh, the SEC is going to get out of their next television contract that I, I, maybe six million at some point looks like eight hundred thousand, but it looks like a lot more than me. Smoky Mountain Red said, "Just curious, uh, does Josh Allen seem like an? Uh, does Josh, excuse me, seem like an NFL coach to you?" I really think he does. Uh, to be honest with you, I, I think he could do either. I don't think there's a big difference nowadays. You know, back in the '90s when I started all this stuff. Coaches aspired to get to the NFL because they didn't want to recruit. And they do now because they don't like the NIL and they don't like the transfer portal and all that. And I I get that. But uh, coaches don't aspire to the NFL like they used to um, as a whole. I mean, I I think that the NFL in the 90s and early 2000s, Caleb, was viewed as a better job. I don't know that it's viewed as a better job. I think it's just viewed now as a different job. Yeah, I 100% agree, which is funny because I think coaches had more market value in the 90s in college than they do now. I still think college coaches have pretty good market value and are still more valuable than NFL coaches. But, you know, you're right. How often do we see coaches at odds with GMs, owners? There's so much more politicking with the upper management now than there used to be that I don't think coaches want to be a part of with the NFL. Um, Look, let's just say it. This is why... You've talked about this. The reason Saban, because we brought him up, the reason Saban went to Miami was, one, Miami was the one NFL job he would have taken because he loves being in Miami. But, two, he hated living in Baton Rouge. (laughs) We know those two things to be true. We also know, I know Miami felt so wronged by him leaving, particularly Don Shula. But let's not forget, Saban was the one who wanted Drew Brees. The team doctors in the Miami organization stonewalled him from getting Drew Brees. And that's their fault that he's still not at Miami right now. Because, I mean, think about Saban with Drew Brees. He'd probably hire the right offensive coordinator and, you know, things would take off. That is fully on Miami. That's fully on the Dolphins organization. And there's really, you know, the head head coaches in the NFL is such a revolving door. Um, There are jobs now, I think, if you're a coach. The Houston Texans job. I would never take that job. I don't care if I was a running backs coach at a group of five school. You could not get me to take the Houston Texans job. If I'm aspiring to be a head coach and climb the ladder. Now, if you're now, if I want a quick payday, sure. It's an NFL job, but I, you know, there are some NFL jobs that the organizations are so bad, so awful, so embarrassing that I, if you're trying to climb the coaching ladder, there's no way you take that job because all it'll do is ruin your reputation. I will say this to Smoky Mountain Reds point. Um, if you compare the jobs, I do think that Josh Heupel instills a belief in young men that you're probably not going to be able to do from year to year in the NFL. I think they're probably a little bit more jaded. They don't want the raw, raw stuff. And I think he's a better fit in that regard for, for college. But I, th- this is how much it's changed just in 20 years. You know, Philip Fulmer used to float his name out there when he was the head coach at Tennessee as an offensive line coach in the NFL, because he was considered the best at the time, the best offensive line coach in the nation, regardless of NFL or college. That's how different the jobs 
were perceived at the time. He would float it, his agent would, Jimmy Sexton, would float his name out there for NFL jobs that were assistant coaching jobs as opposed to being the head coach at Tennessee. Nobody would ever make that move anymore. That's long gone. You wouldn't even make a move to be a coordinator. If if the New England Patriots came to Lincoln Riley or Josh Heupel or whoever and Bill Belichick said, yeah, I just, you know, the offense was a complete disaster. I want to hand it over to you 100% written in stone. Here's a contract. It's your offense. No head coach in the power five, 75% of the power five schools would take a step down to being a coordinator from a head coach. That wasn't always the case. First part of the program brought to you by Andy Mason, real estate.com. Go to Andy Mason, real estate.com, a realtor with over 40 years of experience. His team has that and they will save you thousands of dollars. Don't make that mistake by going with the wrong realtor. You can absolutely work with Andy Mason, real estate.com best service, best prices in the biz. So hit that like button. It brings more people into the program, but I want to hear from the message board. Are you a little blown away by the number that you saw from five to $9 million? I've become a little desensitized, quite frankly, Caleb, when I saw the five to 9 million, I thought in the back, the first thought I had, was nine is about where you should be. I'd probably say eight. Um, as you brought up, coaches have, have been in championship positions before that make that type of money. But I was not completely stunned by nine. What was the first thing that went through your head yesterday? I'm not going to lie. I was stunned by nine. Um, wow. Okay. And I was stunned because, like I said, I saw the other coaches that are getting the nine million. And all of them have a resume right now that's better than Hypo. Now, you ask me, I'll, now to be fair on this, if you ask me right now, would I hire Josh Hypo or Jimbo Fisher? I'm hiring Josh Hypo and I'm not thinking twice about it. But Jimbo Fisher's salary is if you ask me, would I hire Josh Hypo right now or Jimbo Fisher, what I knew about him in 2018, I'd have probably taken Jimbo Fisher. And and so that's where I'm kind of a little shocked about this because he's in some really elite company now. And I'm not saying he doesn't deserve it. I think, I think you and I both agree. Josh Heupel, has, Tennessee's here to stay largely because no one's figuring out this offense anytime soon, which is funny because it's such a simple, easy offense to figure out if you play on offense. But it's no defense is going to figure out this offense anytime soon. So Tennessee's here to stay. They're going to be a fun team to watch. And they're going to start luring even more elite offensive players to the program and they're about to have uh the greatest quarterback for the josh heupel system that he could ever find come into the program so i i get the money i still was shocked um and i was just asked if i if, if i think mark stoops has a better resume i think josh heupel is ahead of mark stoops now I, I sam hargrove said that on youtube i think josh heupel's paid more than mark stoops isn't he dave uh yes yeah, I would, I would think so. Um, I can, I can look that up, but I would say he surpassed him at this point. Yeah, and let's not. And Mark Stoops, honestly, winning ten games at Kentucky—that's the most impressive thing any coach has done in the SEC over the last. Well, he's he's at eight point six, which which makes a lot of sense. Maybe that was the benchmark number they wanted to get over. Possibly, that, if they put him ahead of Mark Stoops. That kind, yeah, that kind of makes sense. And uh, you, you could have said eight point seven five, but nine has a nice, a nice ring to it. So. Am I saying that Mark Stoops has a better resume? Um, no, I don't. I don't. I don't think he does. I think winning ten games in Kentucky is pretty impressive. Smoky Mountain Red said, "I felt eight million as well. I thought he would need an SEC championship at the least to get to nine million, but for now, I trust Danny White. I mean, but let's be real honest. When we start talking about some of the TV numbers, we're we're almost talking monopoly money, aren't we? I, I mean, think that's. I agree. The more I, I was surprised at first but I get it because I'm with you. I looked at some of the new deals um, that are about to come and you're right. 9 million. This is like, that's going to be chump change in a couple of years and hypo will be worth a lot more. They're going to have to renegotiate hypo's contract in two or three years. Again, honestly, um, this reminds me of when Scotty Pippen signed that seven year deal with the bulls. Dave, you know what I'm talking about in 1991 and then complained about being underpaid for years. Yeah. And when Jerry Reinsdorf was like, the NBA is about to go global in 1992. We're about to triple in value. Don't sign this deal. Don't sign this deal. And Scotty still signed the deal 
and then thought he was underpaid the rest of his time. And it's like, yeah, but you took a seven year deal worth like he was he was worth he was making like two point five million and he would have been worth like ten million more if he just waited two years. <laughs> No, I don't. I don't think of Scotty Pippen as the best uh, negotiator. Um, he did a lot of things great, and I loved watching him play. But I don't know that he helped himself uh, in that regard at all. 